All right. I know we have a few other people who signed up, but I'm not sure if they're going to be wanting the uh, just the recording or not. So we're going to get started here. I know people have plans or want to make dinner and whatnot, but we thank you guys so much for coming today. As you guys know, we are going to be chatting all about gut health today. So this is an educational webinar presented by yours truly at Nurse Roots. So if you don't know who we are, we are a two registered dietitian team. We focus on whole foods in a non-diet approach. So we're all about all foods can fit. We're not about fad diets or crazy supplements. We're evidence-based. So we're always looking at new research that's out there. I was actually just looking up some different scientific articles even just prior to this. And then we help our clients to see results in an individualized way, whatever their goals and desires may be. If you haven't checked out our website yet, you can go to nourishedroots.com. Um, if you have, then you may or may not know that we're actually constantly uploading new recipes, new resources, new events like this. If you live in Nashville, we are um, we sometimes have in-person events uh, depending on the time of year and situation with COVID and whatnot, but always check back on our site for the most up-to-date information. So getting to the good stuff, we're going to be chatting about gut health today. And this is a, an important topic that's out there. You hear it a lot in the media, in um, the news and magazines, and you hear a lot of terms like probiotics and things like that. So we want to make sure we're giving you guys the most up-to-date information. So we're going to be chatting about what the gut is, why it even matters. We're going to be talking about nutrition and how to promote gut health, um, the difference between pre and probiotics, fiber, water, and then I'll be taking questions from you guys if you have any. So this is just a reflection question from you guys. Um, you can also feel free to put anything in the chat box as well if you want to reflect to the group or if you want to ask a question, but we you know, wanted to start off here just to reflect on why do you think it's important to have a healthy gut and thinking of it, um, not just in terms of like a healthy stomach and, you know, the stomach is in the middle of your body type of thing, but why do you think it's really important? And hopefully after this presentation, you guys will understand why it is important to have a healthy gut. So what exactly is gut health? Again, a term that is thrown around a lot these days, and we're actually referring to the diverse functioning GI tract. So if you think of um, like your mouth all the way through your esophagus to your stomach, through your bowel, and specifically gut health is actually really referring to like your stomach, your intestines, and your colon. The main functions of the gut are to digest and absorb nutrients from the food we eat. And it also plays in a role in our immune system and water balance in our body. So there's a lot of interplay between different organs in our body. I think majority of the people think of the way we digest and absorb nutrients being the most uh, beneficial or importance of gut health. I'm sure we've all been there where you eat something that your stomach just doesn't agree with and you know, it may not be digesting it appropriately. So hopefully this helps you guys to better understand that. Um, this is going a little bit into the the science behind it. So I won't go too in depth in this, but I just wanted to first off bring you guys through the journey of how food actually goes through our body. And we oftentimes, including myself, you just mindlessly eat the food and then it's in your stomach. And then, you know, eventually you poop it out and it's, you don't think about it, but the food actually goes through a, a huge process in your body. That's actually pretty cool to me. And if you think about it um, in the terms of food entering the mouth first, if you think about like your taste buds, the fact that you have to masticate the food and then it travels eventually to your stomach from your esophagus. And um, here it says your stomach enzyme break down the nutrients. It actually even begins in your mouth. We have salivary um, enzymes that help to start to digest food. So you're constantly digesting food no matter where you are in your GI tract. And then Another thing to note is there are a lot of other organs like your uh, liver or your pancreas that can also help with this process. And this is because they're the ones making those enzymes. And then lastly, if you think of the end of the body, your colon is what um, is excreting any waste, obviously. And um, it actually also absorbs additional water and it electrolytes the body can use. So it, I think this process is really cool in that if there's anything like good essentially left over from the waste, your body actually absorbs it back at the end so that it can use it for fuel or whatever reasoning later on. 
So going again into a little more science here, the gut is actually made of made up of trillions of good bacteria. I think people think of bacteria being bad, but there are actually a lot of good bacteria um, types as well. And bacteria can help to regulate your gastrointestinal function. It can protect against infection, regulate metas metabolism. It can do a lot of different things. We're not gonna go far in depth with the bacteria types and things today. That's even, that's beyond my scope for sure. But it is just important to know that there are good types of bacteria. So unfortunately, there are some harmful or unhealthy bacteria that are out there that can impact these functions. So it can decrease the functionality. It can totally go away. And you really want to make sure that you have a proper balance and you want to make sure you have good, more good bacteria over bad bacteria versus um, the other way around. And if you have too much bad bacteria over good bacteria, this can lead to disease and inflammation. And research suggests that is best achieved. So this balance that I'm talking about using nutrition rather than just supplements. So this is where we get into my favorite part, obviously as a dietitian is nutrition and where that comes into play. So nutrition does play an important role. And really the, the gist of what we're gonna be talking about is how diets high in complex carbs and fiber have been shown to make positive changes. So we're gonna go into more specifics here, which are these four things down here. So starting off variety, and this is you know pretty vague thinking of this, but I really like to make sure that people know that you wanna have a variety in your routine because you wanna make sure that you are eating a wide variety of um, colors and that's because you're getting way more nutrients. So if you think about it, like over here, these blueberries have, are blue versus this is green. That's because they're, ma they're made up different nutrients, which makes it that color. So that means you're getting adequate um, nutrients overall. If you're eliminating total food groups then you may actually be deficient in certain nutrients. And different foods, this is important for us because different foods can contribute to different types of bacteria. And if you have a wide range of good bacteria in your gut, then that's a good thing. You want to make sure that you're eating a wide variety of bacteria, good bacteria, I should say, to help promote good gut health. Next, looking at pre and probiotics. These are terms that are thrown out all the time these days. Um, I see them a lot. This is actually a really common question as a dietitian. So I do want to decipher between them for you guys. Probiotics, they're actually live bacteria. So they are alive, which is kind of weird to think about, but it's found in certain foods or supplements that are ben beneficial to our health. So if you think of like fermented foods, they might have probiotics. Some foods may have them added versus prebiotic. If you think of like the word pre, this is actually how I always remember the difference between them. Pre is actually the food for the probiotics. So I think of it being um, like the first thing. I just, again, think of the word pre for this. So prebiotics come from fiber and carbs and can be found in beans, legumes, lentils, fruits, whole grains, and veggies. So prebiotics, you can get through a lot of different things um, versus probiotics. You can get them in like fermented foods, like I mentioned, but you can also actually get them in like yogurt is another one. Now I did want to uh, touch upon probiotics or actually going back to the prebiotics, people will ask, well, how many do I need? Just eat a lot of these different foods. If you're eating a well-balanced diet, you're likely eating a lot of whole grains and a lot of veggies. So you're likely eating a pretty well-balanced diet. But next looking at probiotics um, as a supplement, there are so many probiotic supplements out there. Um, some supplements actually contain pre and pro. So if you are going to be buying probiotics, look for the live active culture. So you want to make sure it says that on there. Um, this is just the kind of quantity that you want, um, to look for. And it should say that on the back of the label regarding, you know, the research behind it. And if, if everyone should be taking one research is super, super controversial. There's really limited research that shows that probiotics actually do any good. So I really like to, to emphasize that, especially because they're, they're pricey. Um, and therefore we recommend trying real whole foods first. Like I mentioned, the fermented foods and yogurt, they actually may be beneficial for those who have certain bowel diseases like IBS, 
those who are on antibiotics and those who are on antibiotics, they're essentially having bacteria killed in their gut. And that could also be including good bacteria. So probiotics could help kind of restore that balance. And then those with other certain health conditions may benefit. For example, if um, you have some type of like a foodborne illness, maybe you have like a parasite or something, a probiotic could be beneficial. So really to sum up, if, if, you wanted to take it and you felt strongly, I don't think there would be any harm to it. However, the research to this day is still super controversial. So looking at fermented foods, which as I mentioned is a probiotic, it shows that those who regularly eat fermented foods have more beneficial bacteria and fewer disease causing bacteria in their gut, which I think is really cool. This, the research for this is actually really strong versus the lack of research I mentioned for the probiotic supplement. So if you're someone who's really wanting to, then you could definitely eat more uh, fermented foods. And then, as I mentioned before, things like plain yogurt actually have um, probiotics in it. So that's like an easy way to get probiotics in through a natural food. And um, an example of this is I know in hospitals, a lot of the time, a lot of patients are on antibiotics, they'll automatically give them a plain yogurt to have with it because it could help restore that. So just some food for thought here. Looking next at fiber. So fiber is a type of carb. A lot of people don't think about that, but it's actually indigestible. Your body doesn't digest it. Instead, it passes through your body relatively quickly. And you want a mix of both soluble and insoluble fiber. So soluble, obviously the word, it dissolves. Insoluble, it does not dissolve. You don't really have to know that as a consumer, just a little bit background info, but soluble fiber is important because it can help to lower your blood cholesterol. So if you, or maybe your parent or grandparent has high total cholesterol levels, eating more soluble fiber can actually help to reduce it without going on a medication, which I think is super cool. It can also regulate blood uh, glucose levels in the body. So whether you have diabetes or whether you're working all day and you just wanna have like stable blood sugars so you don't crash, it can be really helpful. Insoluble fiber promotes the movement of material through your digestive system and it actually can, it's mainly um, to help promote healthy bowel movements. So looking at these two sources, we have soluble fiber, which has whole grains, it has beans, it has fruits and veggies and flax seeds. And then insoluble fiber, you have things like fruits and veggies. The thing to note about fruit is that you wanna make sure it has a skin on it, beans, wheat bran, and nuts. So really there's, if you're eating whole grains, you're eating a well-balanced diet of like fruits and veggies, you're most likely meeting your fiber intake. So we've mentioned the two kinds. A lot of people don't even know there are two kinds. Really, you wanna aim for just like half and half. You don't have to count the two. I highly recommend counting how much of both you're getting. Um, that just sounds like a stressful situation. So just get a wide variety. And if you are someone who has irregular bowel movements, soluble fiber can slow things down. So therefore it helps with diarrhea. So say you're on a trip and you're having diarrhea or something, soluble fiber can help with that. And then insoluble fiber can actually speed things up. So therefore it helps with constipation. So again, looking back at, back at these food lists, maybe if you're having one way or the other, you might want to focus more on one of these certain food groups. All right, next looking at water. So Staying hydrated can also actually help to um, have a healthy gut. And another reason why is it benefits the mucosal lining of your intestine. Now, again, something you might not think of, but it really can help to digest certain nutrients. We recommend aiming for at least eight cups of water per day or 64 fluid ounces. You could hydrate with plain water. Sparkling water is a great one, uh, tea. You can do moderate coffee. We don't recommend um, typically more than like two or three cups a day. And fruits and veggies actually have a high water content. I was looking up the water content of a squash the other day and squash is like 70% water, which is kind of cool to me. So not that it's easy to count the amount of water in that, but it is fun to make sure you're staying hydrated through food. And then looking at sparkling water and um, fun drinks like that, we do recommend sticking away from ones that have a lot of calories and sugar in them and trying to go for zero calories or zero sugar. And that's because 
excess sugar consumption can lead to certain chronic diseases like diabetes or cardiovascular disease. So some other factors that you may think of, getting plenty of sleep, regular exercise or movement, and also stress management, they all have a, a um, or have been linked to improve, improve gut health. So you may be eating totally fine, but maybe you're stressed and we're gonna go into this next, but your mind is actually connected to your gut. So you do wanna make sure that you are, um, that you're healthy all around and not just related to food. So. This is when we'll look here at the gut brain axis really quickly. If you are wanting to learn more about this, then you could uh, definitely look up online gut brain axis and it will go into far more detail here than here. But this is actually the relationship between the microbiome of your intestines and your central nervous system. So if you think of the central nervous system is directly connected towards your brain. So your CNS or your central nervous system it includes the brain and includes the spinal cord. It, um, this part of your brain, it controls homeostasis. So like balance and how you're feeling, your reflexes, your memory and learning, and then any voluntary movement. So obviously very, very important. So it plays a mood in, or a, has a role in your mood and your mental health. And this is because nutrition related to your brain, they're, they're connected. So what you eat may affect how you feel stress um, may cause you to lose your appetite or even overeat when you're not too hungry to cope with your feelings. So if you think of like stress, if you think of your mood, essentially it's a two-way street and it goes back and forth. So depression is a mental illness that is most commonly managed with medication, self-care practices, and therapy. And there's growing evidence that suggests diet can actually play a role in the prevention and treatment of the disease, um, as well as like anxiety um, and other things. So one such study found that those who ate a healthy diet were at significantly lower risk of eventually developing depression, which I think is really interesting. And that really, again, has to do with that gut brain axis, the connection between the two, they're highly correlated. Um, and then lastly, I did wanna just talk about really quickly how your um, brain in relation to stress, something I think I talk about a lot with my clients is, if you're feeling really stressed and it could speed up or slow down your metabolism. And then a lot of people can, you know, with their bowel movements, they may be constipated or maybe they may, they might be going way more often than they would have been usually. And that's because of this gut brain access. So there is a lot more that we can go into related to science for this. So I won't, but long story short with this is thinking about how, what you eat. So eating healthy is important for so many other things outside of weight and um, fueling your body. It's that even for like mood and depression and anxiety and things like that. So they're all related. So I just wanted to just have you guys just think of these. Um, maybe you could, you know, think about them later or something, but how you think that gut health impacts your life and, you know, think about the struggles that you deal with. What are some changes you're going to make in your life to promote gut health? So after hearing this, you know, are you going to focus on X food? Are you going to eat less of another food maybe? And then in conclusion, our gut health plays a major role in the prevention of disease and overall health. We really strive and um, suggest you guys eat a very diet rich in plant-based foods, fiber. You can have natural sources of pre and probiotics um, or supplements if you need. And that will really help to promote good gut health in your, in your body. So if you guys want more information, obviously a registered dietitian, we're always going to rec recommend here, but you could speak to a gastroenterologist, which is a GI doc. We recommend going to eatright.org. That's the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics resource. Harvard Health Online has a lot of good resources. If you're sciencey and nerdy, PubMed is a great resource as it is science articles. And then Hopkins Medicine is another one. So we would love for you guys to stay connected. If you guys wanna check out our site, um, if you have a GI disease yourself, we're more than happy to speak with you guys about that and just you know help you to create some next steps to help you. And we would love to take any questions that anyone has. You can put them in the chat box or you can feel free to yell out. Um, I know someone messaged about, someone chatted about how many grams of fiber you need a day. So 
that varies for men and women. So women need 25 grams of fiber per day and men need about 38 grams per day. And something that's actually really interesting to me about this is that most women have, um, they only get 14 grams of fiber per day and not the 25. So that could really cause you to have irregular bowel movements. Maybe you're constantly hungry because you're not eating enough fiber. Maybe your cholesterol is high. Um, There's so many different things that a lack of fiber rich diet can do for you. So I really recommend focusing on fiber sources at all meals and snacks. Does anyone else have any questions? Someone asked what is considered high fiber. Um, so what's considered high fiber, if you're looking at a nutrition label, technically anything with five grams or more is considered high fiber. So if you're buying a loaf of bread at the grocery store, I really recommend aiming for at least five grams in that, in that um, serving of bread. If that's not possible, whatever resource you have, um, then aim for at least three grams, but technically five grams or more per serving is considered high fiber. It's a good question. Anyone else have any questions? All right, well, thank you guys so much for coming this evening, really appreciate it. Again, if you guys have any more questions about gut health or you wanna know how to better your own gut health, we can definitely take a look at what you're currently eating and how things are going, provide you with some recipes. We'd love to chat, so thank you so much. And we hope you guys have a great rest of your evening.